As he stood up and left the crowd, little did he know that his horror and nightmare has just begun and life will never remain the same for Mr. M. Hello, scary mystery story lovers. Welcome back. So, Mr. M turned to Mr. Peters and asked Mr. Peters, Will you be here for long? Mr. Peters said yes. He said, Okay, I will meet you up. Let me walk her to the next community and I will be back. Off, Mr. M rushed to catch up with his girlfriend and they walked away. As they walk along this bush path, now, mind you, getting from this first community to the second community, you will not see anything on the road. Both sides of the road has thick forest, big trees. That's all you see. So as they walk through this bush path, going to the next community, they started talking, making jokes as they walked on. Getting close to the community, when they started seeing lights from houses in the community, he stopped and he said to her, I will stop here, I'm going back to join my friends, I will come back to see you tomorrow. And, he, and she said to him, don't go, come and pass the night in my house, and tomorrow morning you go home. And he said, I'm not even going to stand here for us to continue our argument. This is what I told you before I left Mr. Peters and the rest of our friends, and that's what I'm going to do, I'm going back. She calmly looked at him and said, If you turn back, you will never get home. And he looked at her and laughed. Ha ha, yeah right. I'm going. See you tomorrow. Before you know it, I will be in your house. As he took few steps away from her, she said it again. You will not get home. And he laughed for the second time and continued walking. Now he said he doesn't remember how many more steps he took from when she said that word the second time. All of a sudden, everything changed right in front of him. It was as if he was in a thick, dense forest. Now there was no bush path, there was no road, there was nothing. He turned to look at her and say, is this a joke or something? And she was nowhere to be found. Then reality dawned on him that he is in deep trouble. So he started walking, running in the darkness, falling down, standing up, uh, stuff, tearing his clothes. And all he's not, he doesn't care. All he wants to do now is to find the road because adrenaline has kicked in. So he's scared he's running he's doing everything according to him he walked and walked and ran and ran to no avail everywhere was dark he couldn't find anything he kept running and running didn't want to stop up until he started seeing lights and then he felt relieved a bit he said okay i'm going to walk into this community and ask for help so they would direct me back to mr peter's community off he went into the village started asking for direction for mr peter's village and what they said to him is you have to follow us to the place of our leader there you can get every information you want to him this was strange because all he wanted was direction out of this place that he doesn't know and doesn't recognize but he said well no problem i'm going to do that because maybe that's how they do in this community when they got to the place, it was a massive place with so many people there, like a king's palace, people just sitting around doing what he doesn't even understand. So they took him in front of a man sitting in a huge chair. And next to him by the left side is a lady sitting in another huge chair. And 
he stood in front of the man and he greeted him and said i'm looking for my way to this community he said the name of the community the man didn't say a word to him turned to someone by the side that might be a, like a guard or something and he said go and get the princess that person walked out from the place and then after a few minutes the door opened and immediately the place the door opened everybody in this room fell down on their knees bowing down and started enchanting some strange words and then here comes a lady dressed in weird clothes hair weird everything looking all strange walked past me and walked to the leader got there bowed down greeted him and then sat down on his feet and when she turned and looked at me lo and behold that was my girlfriend but right now her clothes has changed her hairstyle has changed everything about her has changed according to what mr m said standing there all confused he asked her what are you doing here how did you get here and how did i get here and what am i doing here the only thing she said was i told you if you try to go back you will not get home and you thought it was a joke and she didn't say anything anymore all of a sudden enchantment started they started moving in a weird way all of them in the room their hands they were moving and pointing their hands to me and moving their body like they were dancing some type of weird dance and everything was just strange nothing i've ever seen before in my life they put me in a place locked me up secured me and i said i want to go i want to go and she said to me don't worry nobody will ever find you even the people that are looking for you will not find you they kept enchanting points some kind of liquid on me forcing me to eat some weird things that i do not know if i don't want to eat they're going to open my mouth and force it inside and force me to eat force me to drink this weird liquids that i didn't know what those things were all i was just saying is i'm waiting for the sunlight to come out so i can just make my escape and wander in the forest instead of me to be in the midst of these weird people that i do not know so i kept waiting and waiting and it never came everywhere was dark at this point i didn't know if i've been in the forest for a day a few hours two days or i didn't know because there was no sunlight for me to use to count how many days i'm gone or anything but i was sure that mr peters they would be looking for me so he stayed in the forest and said this was what was going through his mind thinking mr peters will find me they will find me and then all of a sudden they came to where they had him brought him out and all these women rounded him they put him in his knees and they were enchanting like they were voking on something but what they were saying he didn't understand and they were doing their hand in a uh, circular motion around his head and voking and voking and voking that lasted for like forever and then all of a sudden they went to where they had snakes they grabbed one of the snakes brought it out killed it violently cut off the tail placed the tail in his left hand that's the left hand of mr m secured it with some uh herbs some leaves and then they added some weird things that were like tooth like the tooths of animals or bones or weird stuff like that and then they added a black um polythene bag to tie it and then they added a red fabric and then a black fabric and they secured it very well on his left hand and they told him to leave off he went after he walked away from where they were all of a sudden he found himself on the road he recognized that this was the pathway that lead to the next community so he off he went to mr peter's room reaching mr peter's village the first people that saw him started screaming 
the children around were running away. He looked like somebody that just came from the dead. All his clothes were torn and tattered, his hair full of deaths and everything. They grabbed him and took him to Mr. Peter's house. The whole community gathered, everybody gathered and started asking him questions. Now, mind you, after he did not show up a few hours, the next morning, Mr. Peters took some of his friends and they went to the next community to ask this girl where he was. She said she didn't know. The strange thing is, how was she able to be in two places at the same time? She was the princess up in the forest where those strange things was happening to Mr. M. And at the same time, she was in this community where Mr. Uh, M's friend, who is Mr. Peters, is asking for his friend. So when they brought him, he narrated everything that happened. He could barely talk. Now he has been missing for over seven days now. At this point, they've been searching for him for over seven days. And all of a sudden, one hot afternoon, he just showed up and he's narrating the stories. At first, they could not believe him. And when he got to the part that he said, before they let me go, they killed the snake tied it on my left hand and wrapped it with some weird with these weird things if you people don't believe me let us check it and they flipped his long sleeve he was wearing a long sleeve his clothes was torn and all of that they unbuttoned it and lo and behold there it was wrapped in his hands they started untying it and exactly how he explained red fabric fabric black fabric um weird uh, thing the tail of a snake the teeth of animals and all of that was there in his hands they removed it placed it on the floor everybody was surprised but people knew that this lady was a witch but they didn't know how far she had gone him saying that she was the third in command and the leader referred to her as the princess just for that sum the whole thing up for them to understand that this is what this lady did and that jilted the memory of some of the people in the community to remember the last person that was ever to date this lady how they had an argument and she told him i'm going to show you and that night he went to bed woke up the next morning and he was full of cut mark violent like as if someone attacked him with a razor blade or a knife or something he woke up the next morning all his body everybody that was around saw it and he knew that it was from her and she didn't hide it but because people dread her family and dread anything that has to do with them nothing was done to them so when this happened Mr. M was never the same anymore. After a few days, they noticed he would sit and talk to himself. He would walk around talking to whatever he finds. So they were able to take him and send him back to his people. But he never, ever 